The Lord be with you. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church and School. Our mission is to know Christ, grow in Christ, and make Christ known. And today we observe All Saints Day. We remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us in, at Trinity Lutheran Church in the Christian faith. We're blessed again to have Pastor Doug Francic as our preacher on this special day. And we would be grateful if you would fill out an attendance card and place it in the offering plate. And also our dear visitors especially are directed to the guidance concerning admission to the sacrament. It's in your bulletin on page two. This uh, weekend also, we culminate our stewardship education program with the depositing of our stewardship pledges in the special receptacle. It will come at the time of the offering. And be watching also in your email for an invitation to complete a time and talent survey. And that will be a very valuable tool for our understanding of the range of gifts that God has given to the members of Trinity Lutheran Church. And now I would like to announce a bit of very good news. Trinity member Evan Root, a graduate of Concordia Seward, will soon, uh, next month, be entering into his new role as coordinator of youth and family ministries here at Trinity. As of the first of the year, it will um, be a full-time position, including a bit of administrative work, but mostly the youth and family activities. Uh, and uh, in that ministry, we're very excited about that. Let's welcome Evan Root and pray for him in his new role. I have to make a schedule change um, for the adult catechesis. It was to have begun a week from today on the 13th, our new member, new member class, uh, because of a scheduled funeral uh, for Dorothy Campbell that will actually not begin until the next Saturday, November 20th. And also a reminder that this coming Sunday, so a week from tomorrow, there will be a special voters meeting, and the purpose is to consider candidates and issue a call for associate pastor. So that matter. And then finally, a um, couple, couple final things. An encouragement uh, to everyone to consider exiting through the West Nave because there's a very special um, piece of artwork prepared by the fifth and sixth grade confirmation class. It's Luther's Rose. You, maybe you saw it last week, but if you haven't, you may want to pause and really admire that special work. Uh, and then finally, Mary Becker of the Board of Evangelism is available to assist you with the Adopt a Missionary project. It's talked about in the bulletin. You can read more about it. Great opportunity. Adopt a missionary. So she'll be, I suppose, in the uh, West worship entrance at that time. Pastor Francis, I know, has an announcement to make. I got my speaker. I think you can hear me. Three weeks from today, my wife and I will celebrate 50 years together. And so we're have, the kids are putting on an open house for us uh, at Bethany from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. So as much time as I spend here, you're part of my family. And so I just want to invite you, if you're the opportunity, it's a Saturday after Thanksgiving. So if you're available and have a time, stop by Bethany from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. We'd love to enjoy a conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Are there any other announcements? Youth. All right. There you go, Jacob. Hello, I'm Jacob, and I'm one of the youth who will be going to the National Youth Gathering this July. The youth will be doing a fall cleanup on Sunday, November 14th, where we will be raking leaves. If you or someone you know would like help raking the leaves in their yard, please contact the church office, Evan Root, Mike, or Jana Pownell. Um, their contact information should be in the bulletin. I'm also here to remind you about our fundraiser, That's My Pan. For this fundraiser, we are selling personalized pans, mugs, and other cooking-related items. Our order deadline has been extended to November 14th. That's next Sunday. This way, the pans will be delivered in time for Christmas. 
I will be by the elevator after the service, so please come by and check out some of our other items. You can order directly from us after church every Saturday or Sunday uh, until the deadline, or pick up one of these handy brochures so you can order online. Thank you for supporting the Trinity Youth. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? If not, then turn to 677 and let's stand for the opening hymn.
Please turn in the fourth part of your hymnal to page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue in your bulletin on page three, the intro it. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you me and me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have me, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading for the Feast of All Saints is from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who persecute, are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, 
For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated as we join together and Jesus sat with his disciples. grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It was probably about a couple weeks ago, and I was kind of surfing through the channels on TV, and it came upon, it was one of the sports channels, and it showed a story of a young boy, I think he must have been about 8, 10, 12 years old, and he was with his father, and he was to a football game. And I believe it was Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where he was at. And I think that was his favorite player. And he got to see that player and I think Tom Brady heard about it. But in the interview of this young boy, he said, I'm blessed. He was blessed because he was getting over brain cancer, and he was recuperating, and he got to see his favorite player. And as I heard those words, and I was preparing for my message this evening, I thought, I wonder if the people that I'm sharing this with feel they are blessed, especially when we come this evening on this All Saints weekend. And what we're going to do in a little bit is remember those saints that have gone before us. But I think about that you and I, we are saints. I mean, sometimes we don't feel like we got our good saints, but I think about who a saint is. It's a holy person who through the waters of baptism, through Christ of what he did 
for us, for partaking of his very body and blood in his supper, for reading his word, for having our sins absolved. You and I are saints. But dear brothers and sisters in Christ who are saints, sainthoods are filled with periods of being poor and mourning and harassed and hungry and struggling and going through all kinds of heartache. That's what sainthood is all about. This is the life, the life of a Christian who was called by God to be a saint. Yes, the path of a sainthood is sometimes filled with hardships, sorrows, and pain. So tell me, do you feel blessed this evening? I can tell you whether you feel blessed or not. You are blessed indeed. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One struggle we have as Christians, as saints in our life, is that we think that we should have all that peace and rest right now. We should have it instantly. And as Christians, we think that God should reward us and bless us for who we are. That as Christians, we shouldn't go through the struggles of life, dealing with diseases as cancer, and Alzheimer's, and heart diseases, and all the way down the line. That Christians shouldn't have trouble paying their bills. They shouldn't have troubles with relationship problems, with maybe a spouse or a child. Yes, you see, we're supposed to all have the blessedness, this peace and joy and the bliss of heaven that ought to be ours now. But you see what happens when these things happen. When we're living the life of a saint, and remember we're both saint and sinner at the same time. But what happens when these things happen to our lives? And we find ourselves blaming God because he isn't giving it to us right now. And we're not loving our neighbor as ourselves. And at times we're full of unbelief and despair and heartache. And we wonder, what's wrong? And I'm sure in these times we just don't feel much like saints, do we? Because you see, at times we forget. We forget God's word and we like to wallow in our own self-pity. We forget about what God says about being saints. And that's why I chose those beautiful Beatitudes this evening, those pictures in Matthew 5. Christ's words describes our life as sainthood and tells us at times what real life is like as Christians. Now there's times that people take the Beatitudes as law. But I can, I'm here to tell you they are beautiful gospel. And people get it mixed up. They are the good news of Jesus Christ. Yes, you know that everything always isn't sugar and spice and everything nice. But the Beatitudes are rich gospel. Let me give you an example of as I read these first three as the law. Blessed are the meek. How often do we turn the other cheek? Blessed are the merciful. How many times do we show mercy or we hold it back from people? Especially do we forgive others like we're called to do? And blessed are the peacemakers. And so how many times do we fly off the handle and we're right a amongst the battles that are going on, creating more problems. But you see, Jesus tells us as saints, this is his words as he shares with us this evening. I want you to think of the Beatitudes as a song. 
And when you hear blessed, think of that as filled with joy for those concerned. And be reminded that it's like the bells of heaven ringing, ringing down in this unblessed world, in the spirals of the kingdom, in inviting all men to enter. So see, all this blessedness is spiritual, and it's coming through our great king, a rich possession now, but a glorious promise of still greater riches. So I want you to think about all that as I share the Beatitudes with you this evening. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine Jesus sitting down on that hillside, the green grass, and he says these words and he thinks about some of these people that he's sharing with. They are poor in spirituality. I mean, really, many of them are spiritually destitute. And I think about those same words being shared in this world today. There are many that are spiritually destitute. But I think about you and I. We came into this world blind, dead, and enemies of God. We were born in original sin. We did not know God. And so you could say at that time, we were poor in spirit. And I think at times when we think about our own sin, and I think about how we are poor in spirit, but we come to the waters of baptism. We come and partake of his very body and blood. We share his word. And our reward is that we are no longer poor in spirit. No longer are we blind, dead, and enemies of God. But we are his. And so the kingdom of heaven is ours. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I think about those that, the names that we'll read in just a little bit. I think about those that uh, just in the last few days, a loved one has passed. And I know that there's family here for those that are mentioned in our pages tonight. And when lost a loved one, they mourned. Yes, and they grieved. And Christ was yet right there. But they were still going through the pain and suffering of losing a loved one. I think at times we mourn our own sin. I think when we really look inside of us at times, we mourn that. But you see, no matter how much we mourn, our Savior is always right there. Even at times when we're going through those times of grieving and mourning, and we wonder where the comfort is, and sometimes we may not realize it because we live in an evil and harmful world, we may not see it until we see our Savior face to face in heaven. Yes, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That doesn't mean that we're a bunch of wimps. No. It means that we're humble. We're a servant. And we share as servants. Christ came not to be served, but to serve. And we're called to be gentle and caring as we live out our life, even going through difficult times, we're called to be meek and show meek. I think even those times when people hurt us, do we show resentment? We're called to be meek and share the love that only we can give at times because we're supposed to show the love that Christ gave for us. See, his grace and mercy is for each and every one of you this day. 
Yes, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the po- hunger for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Tell me, do we daily cry out to our Lord because of our sin and ask for forgiveness? And does not our Savior satisfy us each day? I mean, think about that. Each day we put off the old Adam and put on the new. Each day we remember our baptism and who we belong. Do you and I hunger each day for his word? Do you open up the scripture and read it and meditate it and study it? For you see, in those words, God's words, you and I are satisfied with comfort and understanding. Yes, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Did you see those first four Beatitudes I shared with you? Those are, we look to God in those. And I'm going to share with you as we look to each other. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Who have we shown mercy for today? <clears throat> have you went to the store or went shopping? Maybe the clerk wasn't just as tentative as you thought that they should be. You ever think about what that clerk may have been going through this day? Maybe they lost a loved one. Maybe they were hurting. Maybe there was something happening in their family. As saints were called to show mercy for one another, does not our Savior show mercy for you and I this day? Yes, he's a merciful God. He forgives our sins. And he loves and cares for us. Yes, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You been in prayer today? Did you stop a little bit and pray for somebody that's in need? Did you lift up others? Did you study God's word? Are we trying to lead a godly life? Are we reminded daily what Christ did for us? That he died and rose? Are we in communion with him today? And I just don't mean as we come to the rail, but did we talk to him? And did you let him answer back? Are we in that close relationship as we commune with our Lord and Savior? Yes, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Are you bringing peace to the family today? Is there struggles going on? Are you that go-between? Are you showing peace in difficult situations? Can you show peace when battles are raging? Yes, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. But blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is a tough call. Who of us are standing up against the world today, the evil world? Do people know that you belong to Christ? Are you being persecuted? I can tell you every day Christians are being put down in so many different ways. And we know that Christians throughout the world are being killed because they believe in Jesus Christ. Are you Christ's witness as he called us to be? For you see, we are to rejoice and be glad even in our persecution, for our reward will be great in heaven. For so they were persecuted to prophets who were before us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, these are attributes of saints. I think about it when you hear the Lord's words, well done, good and faithful servant. 
enter into the kingdom that has been prepared for you. Well done, good and faithful saint. That's what he's calling you and I. I know this is the day that we're going to remember those that have passed before us, who from their labors are resting in our Savior's arms. But see, it's, today is a good reminder that you and I are saints. And we're called to live our life as Christians who are blessed. And you and I are truly blessed because of all that Christ has done for you and I. For all those saints that have gone before us, but for each and every one of you who sits in the pew this night. Christ came, died, rose, ascended, and returned again to take all his saints to be with him forevermore. You're a saint, and oh, how blessed you are. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand with me and turn to page 158. As now here in the word of God, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, the God of the Son. Please take now the insert in your bulletin that is entitled Commemoration of the Faithful Departed. In joyful anticipation of the resurrection to eternal life through our risen Lord Jesus Christ, we remember those who have gone before us in faith to claim their heavenly home by His grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, in whose glorious presence live all who die in Christ, we give you hearty thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. We humbly implore your mercy that we, together with all who have departed in the saving faith, may have our perfect consummation and bliss in both body and soul in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Donald Grisham. For none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whenever we live, for we are the Lord's. Patsy Cohen. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Paul Lovell. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes.
Charles Amor. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Herbert Beer. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, Howard Bruner, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, Betty Sass, since you have given Jesus authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. Russell Weebold. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me award to me on that day. Mildred Flint. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Joanne Ronenberg. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Gordon Scott. Lord, now you let your servant depart in peace according to your word. Joseph Glover, but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead. Richard Talcott, and the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Susanna Smith, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Dorothy Campbell, our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in the faith and in everlasting fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to their joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care, that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all in authority over us, especially those who work to bring peace and justice, 
that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Grant wisdom to our citizens and courage and competence to our leaders. Lord, in your mercy, preserve all who travel, those in need, the sick and injured, all who mourn, especially the daughters and loved ones of Dorothy Campbell, and those who have asked for our intercessions. Deanna Acord, Heidi Baumert, Frank Blair, Jeremy Brown, Chuck and Pat Campbell, Carmen D. Catlin, Alice Hoffmeyer, Jennifer Casca, Karen Kramer, Austin Ort, Beth Pricer, D. Smith, Carol Stellwagen, Ken Subert, Vern Vatrebeck, Bev Welch, and Ed Wiseman. Give your Holy Spirit to relieve and comfort them in the confidence of saving faith. Lord, in your mercy. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, gather us in the blessed sacrament around the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, whom saints and angels adore around your eternal throne. Lord, in your mercy. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, O Lord, and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.